What's going on, everybody? Welcome back to the channel. Now, this review of episode four, I have tried to film at least like four or five different times now because every time I try to upload it to YouTube, it gets a complete blocked ban. Like the, the, the video literally is not allowed to come out. They block everything. So WB is trying to block uh, specific YouTubers or YouTubers in general from reviewing this TV series. So hopefully this review that I do is going to be able to go past their block and be released on YouTube. Now, with that being said, it is unfortunate that I'm going to have to stick to basically still images. If I can show a clip here and there, I will. But I have to stick to still images because that's going to reduce the chances of them being able to copyright this uh, this actual review. And I'm trying to get it out to you guys. So I hope you guys understand. You guys know how this works. You guys have been amazing amazing with this review series thank you so much for all the views and support you guys have been giving me don't forget if you're watching this try to help your boy out fight the youtube algorithm give me a long view duration on this video because that's how we end up fighting the youtube algorithm at the end of the day now with that being said let's get into the review of episode four for velma now every single episode starts off with a recap and this recap for this episode is talking about how fred basically lost his mind in court he has been thrown in prison for the murders of the two girls uh in the high school and daphne and velma were caught kissing by good Good old simp shaggy aka norville who uh is feeling some sort of way because his crush velma doesn't give him any attention whatsoever and is giving all her attention to daphne and then daphne and velma end up kissing again but then they decide that they just want to be friends even though velma decides to want to suggest they should be friends with benefits if you guys are pretty much aware what that is and then we fast forward to velma's explanation of her not being popular in school throughout her history of being in school she's always been made fun of by the same girls the hot girls the popular girls and she doesn't like them whatsoever typical tropes that people experience from a high school you know oriented tv show and then we get to the main event where they talk about the schools being murder free for two weeks which they assume is because fred is being locked up now fred of course is going to be the bastardized character in this entire tv series simply because he's the white male and the white male is often targeted as being the bad evil guy in most tv series for hollywood today now as we fast forward, a lady comes out screaming for over here in the corner. and She says that another girl has been murdered. Now, the funny thing is, I don't think they actually mentioned who this third girl was that got murdered. The first two get named. The third girl doesn't actually get named. Uh, not that I saw anyway. So I thought that was a, uh, a lack in judgment on their part when making this TV series. And then, of course, the principal of the school or the mayor, whoever the hell this is, I guess this is the mayor, Mayor Dave says that uh, now they're no longer murder-free, and this was a $10,000 banner, apparently. This banner cost them ten grand. I highly doubt it, but maybe that's a little uh, jab at politicians and their wasting of money. So then we fast forward to another scene where the whole crowd and the parents and the, and the, and the kids group up together, and they talk about how Fred is essentially now exonerated because another girl got killed while he was in jail. Now, this is kind of having Scream vibes for me, right? Where Remember in Scream, they, uh, the killer ended up being the actual person who they thought it was in the first place, but since he had a partner uh that partner ended up being the reason why he was exonerated and then you realize at the end of the show that it's uh or the end of the movie that it was two people i think they might do that in this tv series i really do i think they might end up doing a combination between velma's mom being the murderer and also uh shaggy's mom being the murderer or norville's mom i keep calling him shaggy because you know rest in peace shaggy but still that's my uh, idea that's going on right now so velma makes this entire big scene about the patriarchy and you know one thing about uh, these episodes for uh for Velma as each episode has its own like distinguished characteristics of topics that they're trying to cover. So the third episode was all about gayness, LGBTQ. It was just all about being gay. The fourth episode is all about the patriarchy, anti-man, hating men, all about men controlling women, controlling women's bodies, controlling women's looks, which anybody who knows anything knows that it's women who are often the biggest critique of other women, but that's besides the point. So Velma goes on this whole tirade about being anti-man and how men uh, shouldn't be in charge of deciding who's hot in the school and who's not because they come up with this initiative where they say that the reason why these girls are being killed according to their uh, investigation which is like nothing is the fact that these girls are hot and you have this random guy who's the father of the black girl over there this this girl right here he ends up simping and saying oh so hot girls have even more troubles to deal with it's like seriously come on man why is why are all the black men in this tv show ultra simps for women like i don't know why they always write black men like that it's weird i guess they don't want black men to be masculine it's just kind of strange to me but let's continue so they come up with this whole idea of it's called hotties only puke faces excluded so it's called it's called hope hope initiative right here on the screen if you guys can read that. So, uh, obviously, it's very stupid. Um, they're trying to come up with this idea to do the five top hottest girls in the school. And they're going to give those girls 
uh, police protection, apparently, because that's a thing. So Velma ends up once again going on this whole tirade about how she's supposed to be the one to make the list because she's so anti-man that she should be able to decipher who the hottest girls are and not men, not in her words, middle-aged white men, which she loves to talk about white men. I always make videos on that because it's true. Mindy Kaling is so obsessed with white men. I, I, I think she probably has posters of them literally in her bedroom. I wouldn't be surprised. So they end up making her be the one who has to make the list. And she says, that's fine. Not that I want to make the list, but it's better than white dudes essentially making the list. So Daphne ends up going outside and hugging Velma uh, for agreeing to make the list. And that leads to this whole scene of them being uh, blushing essentially because they secretly want to bang each other not so secretly you know what i mean like it's so obvious that this is where it's going to end where they're going to end up banging each other but you know it is what it is and she's still at this point in time in the show has an obsession with fred where she is actually you know very much uh not in love with fred but she finds him hot and all that stuff daphne and velma end up sharing the thing and then they're interrupted by the hot girls who basically are trying to tell velma that the girls will do anything to be on a top five hottest list which she doesn't understand because she's ugly and then when you move forward they already start Literally, they start trying to do anything and everything to be on this hot girls list. They have themselves on merchandise. They're literally doing stuff that you would see girls do on social media. She's dancing on a freaking pole in the background during a game. I mean, it's really just, honestly, it's it's cringe stuff, but this show is just filled with cringe stuff, which is expected. And then Velma and Norval end up having a conversation with each other where Norval is basically trying to understand why Velma likes Daphne so much. And is it her personality? Is it her looks? And then Velma ends up saying this, which I really want to play. So let's hope this video doesn't get copyrighted for it. I'm going to play it really quick. Ugh, this is exactly the problem with this list. Men make everything about them and what they want. Not me. I'm an ally. So, <laughs> that so again the patriarchy is a big thing in this tv show they always want to talk about the patriarchy and then norville ends up coming out and saying he's an ally because they love using that absolutely cringe word ally nobody likes the word ally ally is just such a virtue signaling word and it's such bullshit you're not an ally if you have to say you're an ally you're not really an ally if you're an ally you will go do things that would make you actually be an ally while not actually have to virtue signal about it but of course these people don't really know what the word ally is so velma ends up going off about how it's unfair to be a girl compared to a guy blah 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 and then we fast forward to fred being released from jail because he was exonerated and of course they have to emasculate fred again by making his mom do uh really cringy stuff in front of his gang members uh at the prison because you know they, he's become friends with the gang members apparently then he ends up meeting with velma at the restaurant and then when they do he is the one who decides who's the top five hottest girls because fred is just you know clearly only about women that's all he cares about nothing else he's too stupid to care about anything else so he ends up going through the through the yearbook and then when he goes to the yearbook he deciphers who the top five hottest girls are and this is the list let me see if i can play it for you guys olive Gigi, becca and kimmy and daphne because i missed that first uh that first name so those five girls are the top five hottest girls and the only reason this girl was picked to be hot is because obviously she has double d's that's the that's the reason why so after after fred does help velma which he didn't have to do mind you after fred helped velma what does velma do Velma does typical feminism Velma stuff, and she gives Fred a feminism book, literally, okay, it's a female symbol on it, a feminism book that teaches him all about being a feminist and an ally to feminism. This is what this episode is. It's so stupid and cringy. It hurts. It really does. So Fred ends up looking through the book, and then we return to be with uh, Daphne and uh, her moms, where they basically want to talk about uh, protecting her from, obviously, the serial killer because it's aiming for hot girls, especially since she's been named top five of the hottest girls of course Daphne has been named top five of the hottest girls and then Norville's in there and when Norville joins he wants to talk about uh things that make Daphne tick essentially he ends up writing that she's dumb which is one of them and has no personality and during this a geode gets thrown through her window a rock that glows gets thrown through her window and they discover that it's from the crystal mines and they're trying to wonder what it is. And then Daphne thinks it's her uh, birth parents trying to get her attention. I don't know how she got to that conclusion. That seems a little strange, but she did. So Velma ends up going back to the uh, school where she talks to the mayor. And the mayor ends up talking about how they want Velma to make these girls ugly instead of actually trying to do police protection because they're trying to be cheap and not spend money on uh, police protection. So Velma says something like this. Of course, it's another anti-man comment release these girls from the shackles of the male gaze that's that's literally what she said so she's like oh i get to release these girls from the shackles of the male gaze because clearly it's only men who want women to look attractive 
clearly. It's not other women being super critical of themselves and other girls. No, it's just the men. Let's just blame men for literally everything. So the girls end up going over Velma's house, and when they go over Velma's house, she starts uglifying them, and she starts talking about internalized misogyny. Yes, she wants to compare putting on makeup and being pretty to internalized misogyny. This is a feminism TV show all day long, especially this episode. I don't care what anybody says. This is the message that they're trying to push with this particular episode. So we go past that because Velma basically feels like they're hopeless, that they all just want to look constantly pretty, and she only has till 4 o'clock to make them super, super ugly. Then we go back to Norville and Daphne, who are taking a ride uh, to the Crystal uh, Mines, where they want to find out uh, who threw this geode or if they can find any leads. And Daphne starts to think that the serial killer might be the one who's trying to lure her out there, which I mean should be pretty obvious. Now we fast forward to this scene. So this is a really important scene with Fred, because again, this is this entire character arc of bastardizing Fred is all going to lead up to one thing. And I'm sure you guys can guess exactly what that is, but I'll tell you towards the end of the video because it's at the end of the episode. But when we have this scene with Fred, he's reading the feminism book. And as he's reading the book, he can't describe the feelings that he's feeling. And then all of a sudden, he has the opportunity to hit on a girl uh, in a bikini, right? He has a choice. He's like, ooh, bang a bikini, bang and bod. Let me go hit on this girl. And then all of a sudden, his brain just changes, his hardwiring changes. And he finds this who's supposed to be, I guess, an ugly artist doing a drawing of a dog, ironically, who looks like Scooby-Doo, if you guys can see this, right? Oh, well, my animation is blocking it. But that's what it looks like. It looks like a dog that you know, Scooby-Doo. So this is supposed to be an ugly artist. So this is this is Mindy Kaling's way of saying that all artists are all women artists are ugly and they're not really as pretty as the popular girls. That's that's what she's trying to say. And of course, um, she's trying to say that through feminism, you should go after the ugly girls. You should go after the girls who don't put on makeup, who don't do anything like that, who don't care about how they look, because that's what she's trying to teach, which is hilarious to me, because if you look at every picture of Mindy Kaling, she has makeup on. She is all done up. Her hair is fake. Like, there's a bunch of things that showcase the fact that she's a total hypocrite, but that's besides the point. So Fred ends up becoming an ultra-mega feminist, and he has this enlightening moment like Velma, where he starts calculating things, and he decides he's more attracted to the ugly artist and not the girl with the beginning. And he starts freaking out, like, what did you do to me? And then we fast forward to the scene where Velma tries to make them super ugly. And this is what she says about misogyny. I want to I want to play this so you guys really see what's going on with this. And I hope I don't get copyrighted. So we have one day to unlearn a lifetime of internalized misogyny. That's literally what she said. So I'm, I'm not even kidding. Like, everything I say is true. It, when it comes to this episode, it is all about misogyny and the patriarchy in this episode. So she tries to make them super ugly, but she basically makes them look like her does not take care of themselves whatsoever. They don't bathe, nothing. Like, they just... It's such a weird idea to call feminism. The fact that you just have to not wear makeup, you have to not take a shower, you have to not care for yourself in any way. It's like, really? This is what feminism is? Nobody's going to take this shit seriously. And maybe this is Mindy Kaling's way of secretly attacking feminism? Who knows? So Daphne and Norville end up getting back to the uh, museum for the Crystal Caves. They discover their... Uh, their history and then Daphne ends up thinking to herself that she's been here before she feels like she's been here before she looks at a painting and realizes that she has been here before as a baby she was in the crystal mines and she has this flashback of herself as a baby where somebody ends up uh, giving her a crystal for some odd reason and then boom it goes back to the museum and this is uh this is his list that he has for Daphne so she's dumb She's crash. She's manipulative. Compelling backstory. Excited to see where this goes. Yeah, I, I don't really think so. He's trying to write it for the audience, and it's like, it's not exciting at all, dude. There's nothing exciting about it. So Velma's about to unveil the ugly girls and see their transformations, but when she unveils them, they are all exactly the same as the picture, because at the end of the day, these girls do not want to be ugly. They want to be, quote-unquote, bad bitches, and they want to be able to uh, be pretty and wear makeup. So they completely go against what Velma says, and then this entirely weird line happens. This 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 line is so you guys can read it on the screen this line is just like you got to remind remind yourselves this is teenage girls here right this is high school girls we're supposed to be watching here and this is not even like senior year high school girls we're talking like junior freshman this is this is who this guy is saying oh they're so hot daddy like you like this is some crazy shit mindy kaling is crazy for putting this in the show as, as a producer she really is because wow i understand it's supposed to be an adult themed show but are you forgetting this is about kids like come on but again 
this is the ideology they want to push this is this is the uh the entire reason why shows like this exist so fast forward they basically say that they want police detail they don't want to dress ugly no matter what and they don't want to be like velma and that not everybody has to be like velma which these two end up laughing at velma for that so velma goes back and she realizes her entire definition of womanhood is basically shattered she doesn't know what womanhood is anymore she doesn't know what feminism is anymore and she ends up wanting to combine an outfit that makes her uh look like different different uh women and uh women who are basically judged in real life for looking a certain way she wants to be able to associate herself with them so she dresses like them in order to feel some sort of connection it's really strange like she dresses herself like some weird freaking elf it's like do you really think girls do this you really think women do this like is this making fun of e-girls or something like i, I really don't understand what this is about but it is what it is then her mom ends up having to have a baby in the car which of course that's going to drive some craziness so she ends up requesting the police officer to try to clear the road in order for her to have the baby and of course the cop rather not do that inside with the kids who want to pull out their phones and record everything for social media and not miss the moment so once again this is a trope that they're trying to talk about when it comes to social media and kids so she requests the help of the popular girls to do some uh, very explicit dancing and uh, trying to attract the crowd. And once again, we are trying to sexualize teenage girls. Like, I don't get what is going on here. But of course, like I said, I'm not going to play it because it's just dumb and I really don't want to support that. But that's what they try to do. Now, with that being said, Fred ends up being stuck in traffic, seeing this all go down. And he ends up seeing Velma and he has an epiphany and his calculations start going through his head. And he has this screen where he views her as a leader, brilliant, knows herself equals hot. That's what they want you to think when it comes to feminism and women. They want you to view women as strong, independent women who need no man. And that's exactly the only women who are hot. And all these other girls who wear makeup and stuff are truly the ugly ones. That's what they want you to think. So we're going to fast forward. We're getting to the episode here. Daphne ends up going to the Crystal Mines and decides to not want to go inside. And she calls herself Danger Prone Daphne. And Shaggy ends up, well, Norville ends up admitting to himself that he doesn't like danger. So this is a callback to the origins of the first original two characters where they always called Daphne Danger Prone Daphne. And Shaggy was always the scared one. He was always the one that was too scared to do anything. This is callbacks to the original characters. Now we end up going fast forward again where they end up leaving the Crystal Mines. And when they leave, they see this... Uh, laugh and uh, a man basically who was in the mines waiting for them so they're trying to elude that this is the serial killer i still think it's going to be two people doing the killings in my opinion but i could be wrong and then we got the final scene here one of the final scenes with velma holding a new kid who uh the mom basically roasts her and said that she hopes that the kid is not as ugly as velma because once again velma being a south asian indian whatever she is always calling herself ugly seems to be the uh the uh, trope that she does with a lot of her characters, and a lot of people have an issue with that. She has an obsession with white people, but constantly calls Indian people ugly. It's weird. And then the final scene where Fred ends up sending her a nude picture of himself, and uh, she thinks it's by accident, but when she receives the picture, Fred is outside waiting for her with flowers, and he is officially fully full-on simped for Velma, and this is what they want. So this is what I meant by full circle. The episode and the arc for the first four episodes have come full circle with Fred being the ultra simp for Velma, but this, the only reason why they brought him to this point is because they wanted to give Velma her girl boss moment. What do I mean by that? They wanted to give Velma her, uh, her ability to reject Fred, to reject the white man, to reject the patriarchy this is what they wanted to do so they did the entire full circle where fred started off as a douchebag to velma ended up falling in love with her all so she could reject him right at the end and call him gross and try to make make it seem like she's so uh, much more mature than fred and that uh and that fred is basically just a loser and he she closes the window on him that's it and then at the end of the episode, we get introduced to Gigi, who uh, th this character was part of a hoax. I think it was a hoax anyway, online, uh, where they're basically saying this is the female Scooby-Doo, <laughs> which I thought was hilarious. And at this point, this TV show is so crazy that I wish they would go full on. Like, if you're going to give me crazy, go crazy. Make this girl Scooby-Doo. I would love it. I would love the dynamic between Black Shaggy and Scooby-Doo, uh, Black uh, Girl Scooby-Doo. Like, just give it to me. Give it to me right now. I love the idea of it. It's going to be hilarious. But of course, uh, Gigi ends up leaving the bathroom, knocking into Norville and Norville and Gigi end up just being so into each other for some odd reason and that's it that's how the episode ends so we're gonna see what happens on the uh on the fifth and sixth episode when they come out Thursday like I said guys you guys have been amazing supporting the channel with this series I love it so much thank you everything for everything you guys been doing and uh, if you enjoy the content don't forget to leave me a subscribe if you're new here like the video comment let me know what you thought and I'll see you guys on the next one hypnotic out